In this video, we're going to take a look at how to use ChatGPT for redaction purposes. Personal data can sometimes be left in documents unwittingly. So if you need to make sure that all personal data, such as names, dates of birth and email addresses have been removed from a document you're working on, then watch this video. So we're going to start with this document, which is some fictitious meeting minutes I've created for a tech company. Now in here, I have intentionally added a number of items of personal data. So we have names of attendees, their email addresses, and we also have the phone number of a new team member. Now, the first thing I'm going to do is ask ChatGPT to identify the email addresses contained in these meeting minutes and redact them. The idea being that we need to make these meeting minutes public, but we don't want to reveal any personal data as part of that. So I'm going to close the document for a second and head over to chat GPT. And here we go. So the first thing I need to do as usual is make sure I have the GPT four slider enabled and make sure that I've selected advanced data analysis from the drop down menu. If we now head over to the message box, I'm going to click on the attach files icon, navigate to my meeting minutes and click open. So the first instruction I'm going to give GPT for is redact any email addresses from the attached document and create a new document. So ChatGPT goes away and starts its work. Um, it will come up as working here. What we can do is click on this drop down arrow to see what's happening behind the scenes. And it looks like it's nearly finished. It's now outputting the final file. So if I click there to view the redacted file and click open, so let's take a look through the document and see how ChatGPT has handled this. Now, I can see, first of all, that where the email addresses used to appear, they have indeed been redacted. They've simply been replaced by the word redacted. If we scroll down and check the rest of the document, it has done no further redactions, which I would not expect it to do. This section here, the attendee section, is the only place we added any email addresses. So that looks to have worked OK. But what exactly has ChatGPT done behind the scenes to identify those email addresses and make the redactions. To do that, we're going to go back to the Python code that was generated as part of the process. So as I mentioned, you can look at ChatGPT's workings to see how it handles each task. So let's go through this code here and see what it's doing. So first thing it does is load the document. And then the next thing it does is identify the right kind of regular expression to be using in this situation. So what is a regular expression? Well, a regular expression is something that will look for a pattern, a pattern made up of letters, numbers, symbols, and a combination of all three, if need be. Now, in this example, we're looking for email addresses. Now, it's quite common for email addresses to have an at symbol and dots between the domain name and the domain extension. And essentially, that's what this is looking for. But regular expressions and the patterns they use can become quite complex to look for different types of scenarios, different types of combinations of those letters, numbers and symbols. If you're interested in finding out more information on the patterns and regular expressions that can be used, then have a look at the description. I've left some links in there for you to review. 
One of the things to remember is that you can also tell ChatGPT which pattern you wish to use. So if it isn't using the pattern that you would like it to use, go online, find out the pattern you would prefer to use and ask ChatGPT to use that example instead. After the regular expression, it will go through each paragraph in the document and use the Python re.subcommand to identify the email pattern specified and replace that with the word redacted in square brackets. Obviously, this is something that you can ask GPT-4 to change. It then goes on to specify the file path and save the output document with the redacted data. So let's take a look at another example. So for the next example, we're going to redact any phone number in the UK mobile phone number format. So uh, for those of you who are not familiar with this, uh, UK mobile numbers generally start with 07. Uh, we'll have 11 digits in total and may be sometimes preceded by plus 44 with the zero omitted for international dialing purposes. So let's go ahead and send this message to GPT-4. So obviously it knows which format to look for and it goes away and does its working. Let's just expand that out to see its progress. So it seems to have gone through very quickly and identified the relevant data. So if we click on the link to see what's happened there, Okay, I'll scroll through and it has successfully redacted the number. So again, that's just another way in which we can use the redaction capability of GPT-4. Now, I know sometimes in documents, phone numbers have different types of format. So they have different spacing between the numbers and you may need to account for that in your instructions to GPT. Um, but essentially, if it's not finding the data that you require at the time, do feel free to advise GPT for of the formats or any other distinctive information it needs to be looking out for. And it will go ahead and redact the information in accordance with your instructions. If you have any thoughts on other ways you can use the redaction capabilities in GPT-4, let me know in the comments. Likewise, if you have any questions or observations, do give this video a like and don't forget to subscribe for more information on anything Microsoft 365 or OpenAI related. Thank you.